Welcome to the Graduate Job Podcast, your home for weekly information and inspiration to help you get the graduate job of your dreams. Hello and welcome to the Graduate Job Podcast with your host, James Curran. The Graduate Job Podcast is your home for all things related to helping you on your journey to find that amazing job. Each episode, I bring together the best minds in the industry, speaking to leading authors, graduate recruiters and career coaches who bring decades of experience into a bite-sized weekly 30-minute-ish show. Put simply, this is a show I wish I had when I graduated. Hello and welcome to episode 109 of the Graduate Job Podcast, the UK's number one careers podcast. And I have a great episode for you today, a company who you probably haven't thought of applying to, but who have 27 billion to spend over the next five years. Yes, you heard that correctly, 27 billion with a B, and who have seven different graduate schemes on offer. Yes, today I'm joined on the show by Highways England. In the show, we explore their seven different graduate schemes in turn and look at what you need to do to impress at each stage of the process. We cover why personal development is so important on the scheme and the professional qualifications you will gain with Highways England. We discuss the streamlined application process and why you won't need a CV and cover letter, but you will need to focus on Highways England's values. We delve into the top tips and hints for passing each stage of the application process and finish with what you can expect in the assessment centre and how to stand out from the crowd. Now, no matter if you have never heard of Highways England before, or if you've never thought of applying, this is an episode you won't want to miss. As with their seven different graduate schemes, they have something for everybody. As always, you can find a full transcript with all of the links which you can download over in the show notes at graduatejobpodcast.com slash highwaysengland. Before we start today, let me tell you about my brilliant step-by-step online course, How to Get a Graduate Job, which is live and which you can join right this very moment. The first cohort of members are in. The private members webinars are taking place on a Tuesday evening. And I have to say the feedback is that everybody is loving the content, the eight modules, the 23 video tutorials, the 14 hours of content and the 20 plus handouts that you get as well. As one of the members said, I just love having all of the information I need to get a graduate job in one place. If you are serious about getting a graduate job, if you want to turbocharge your job search, if you want to know all the pitfalls and mistakes so that you don't make them yourself, and if you want to know exactly what you need to do at each stage of the process to get on a graduate scheme, then head to howtogetagraduatejob.com and sign up and join now. It's an investment in yourself which will pay itself back many thousand times over when you get that graduate job of your dreams. So head to howtogetagraduatejob.com and join now. Okay, on with the show. I'm pleased to welcome on the show today Natalie Jones, Talent Delivery Lead for Highways England. Natalie, welcome to the Graduate Job Podcast. Thanks, James. Looking, Looking forward to it. And today we're going to explore the exciting graduate opportunities at Highways England. But before we do, do you maybe want to just introduce yourself properly and also Highways England for listeners who might not be aware of what exactly you do as an organisation? Yeah, sure. So um, she said I'm the talent delivery lead um, and that involves, amongst many other things, being responsible for both our graduate and our apprentice programmes. So all the way from looking at what we need in the organisation, attraction, um, bringing people into into the organisation and, and looking after them whilst whilst they're here and, and making sure that they come out of their programmes um, with, a, with a great career in front of them at Highways. Um, so so what, what we do is we're a government owned company um, and we're responsible for modernising, maintaining and operating all of England's motorways and major A roads. Um, so we, we manage the strategic road network in England, um, which is about 4,300 um, miles of, of motorways and, and A roads across the across the, um, the country. Um, you know, we, we have many different types of roles here um, and we work with a, a massive supply chain in making sure that um, everything that you see on the motorway is, is safe um, for all of uh, our car users. Um, 
and pedestrians and, and passengers, et cetera, that, that are using Gower roads on a, a daily basis. Excellent. And uh, an organisation where big plans for the future in terms of, um, you know, lots of major redevelopment and, you know, new development coming on the motorway network. So there's going to be lots of opportunities for, for new graduates to get their teeth into some big projects coming down the line. Yes, definitely. So, so we're in... Um, we're invested in, in what we call roads periods. So um, that's every five years. So we've um, just closed off um, our first roads period and, and now we're into our second, um, which I'm, I'm sure many people have, have seen has, has come with lots of investments. So that's over £27 um, billion pounds worth of investment over the next five years um, that has been put into the company for us to, to kind of do those big schemes and, and maintain our, our strategic road network. Um, and some big, big programs of work as well that, that come with that to, to, you know, really support local communities um, and make sure that people can can get to A to B and, and your milk's delivered to your, your door, et cetera, of a, of a morning. Wow. Twenty seven billion is a big uh, chunk of change there. And there's not many not many companies uh, in the UK where you're going to be working on. 27 billion pounds worth of projects over the next five years so yeah some um some really exciting graduate schemes that you've uh, you've got available at the moment and uh, we will go into those and maybe dispel some of the myths that you're not going to be wearing a high-vis jacket driving along uh, the hard shoulder of the motorway uh, if you were to start working for highways england is that is that right yeah, no, no, definitely. So I, I think that a lot of people associate us with um, with the traffic officer um, service that you see on the motorways, which, of course, is a really important part of Highways England um, to making sure, you know, that actually we, we, we keep the motorways safe. But equally, there's, there's lots more to us than that. Um, and lots of work that goes into, to, you know, to designing that network um, and, and to maintaining it um, from a back office point of view. Um, you know, lots of um, really cool IT that, that we do that's roadside traffic and, and lots that we need to think about in the future as we think about, you know, autonomous vehicles and, and connected cars. Actually, how, how does that work on a on a motorway network? Um, so as technology changes in the wider world, um, we need to change and, and move along and evolve with that um, as well. Excellent. And let's maybe then jump into some of the graduate schemes that you've got currently open. So you've got seven different uh, schemes open at the moment. Do you maybe want to just take us quickly through uh, what these are and what they involve? Yep. So um, at the moment, we have got um, a number of programmes open. So we, we've got the traditional engineering that you might associate um, with Highways England. So, you know, we've got civil engineering. Um, for the first time this year, we're looking at um, electrical and, and energy engineering. But equally, then we've, we've got some other other pieces. So, you know, if you think about our back office, um, we've got finance with with all the investment that we've got within the organisation. Um, of course, you know, we need a finance team to be able to make sure that that's all, all running smoothly. Project management. So, so as you mentioned, we need a finance team to be able to make sure that that's all, all running smoothly. Project management. So, so as you mentioned, James, you know, there's some really exciting projects that people might be able to get involved in if they come and work with us. And that predominantly sits within our, our project management program where you get to start to, to build up your knowledge of, of some of those schemes that we run across England um, and really kind of get involved in, in delivering some of those big programs of work. Equally, we, we've got quantity surveying and um, I, IT, as, as I mentioned, is, is that's a new programme as well for us this year um, where you'll get to work across all of our, our IT teams before thinking about where you might want to specialise in um, and environmental. Um, so that's becoming a really big thing for us as well. Um, we've been running an environmental programme for the past few years and we're putting more investment into into that area, um, you know, like everybody else. Um, We've got environmental schemes that run with, you know, to um, making sure that, you know, we're looking at our carbon reduction, et cetera, as well, along with most other organisations. So a real a real breadth of, of roles, I guess, there for, for people to think about. Definitely. And, um, you know, one that I was... Um hold my hand up and say I was you know surprised just at the the breadth of different opportunities that you've you've got available and so you, you mentioned them there and what I, what I really like um as well is that all of the roles or the majority of the roles you're you're working towards uh, qualification so whether it's 
it's becoming accredited with the as a chartered accountant for the finance one or project management becoming a member of the association of project management or quantity surveying uh, for the different schemes so a real it seems a real focus on learning and development through the through the different schemes no, completely. So, you know, most of our programmes come with an, an element of, of being qualified with it, going to a university college, etc., and taking a formal qualification, or um, whether that's about learning through experience in order to, to build up kind of your, um, your CPD um, in order to become chartered at the end of it. But equally, alongside the qualifications, you know, we have kind of a real learning culture. So it's about what you want to um, get out of it as well. So we have um, lots of e-learning packages, et cetera, and, and lots of other courses that you can think about doing to, to really kind of grow your knowledge with, within highways and, and take your career path where you want it to go. Not necessarily always, you know, what we want you to do. It's, it's definitely a, a two way process for us um, in order to develop your career and, and, and develop your your plans as to, to how you will get there. Yep. And um, is there a consistent, um, I mean, the schemes are all very different in terms of the types of work you'll be doing. Is there, a, um, are they consistent in terms of their length um, and the rotational aspect? So all, all of our programmes are three years. Um, so that is consistent um, from a rotational point of view. So some some will rotate more frequently than others, um, but it tends to be kind of every six to nine months that you'll rotate to make sure that you're getting that wide variety of experience so that you're coming out rounded at the end of your three years with us. And then that gives you the choice and, and to really start to understand what is it that I enjoy and that I want to be doing after the three year programme. Yep. And in terms then of, um, you know, development uh, after the programme, what uh, where do where do graduates um how do they progress uh, post uh, the graduate scheme? So that really depends on, on the role as to what role you go in afterwards and, and you know, what your aspirations are and, and equally how well you've kind of performed within it. So, you know, we've we've got graduates that um, from a project management perspective, they they go on to be assistant project managers or graduates that um, from a project management perspective, they they go on to be assistant project managers or, or straight on to, to kind of the next level and, and being project managers. As I said, with IT, you know, you'll rotate around all of the different um, areas. So so you, you could be moving on to work in the business partnering area or, or you could be specialising and, and working within cyber security, for example. Our quantity surveyors, again, you know, go on to, to be fully fledged assistant quantity surveyors, commercial managers um, with us. And, and our finance, you know, it, it's all very much similar. They, they kind of take that next step into really then starting to own something um, within highways and, and England and, and put their their knowledge and their experience from the past three years into to real practice. Yeah, and we we talked earlier about the the twenty seven billion pound investment. So as a a finance graduate, there's some huge projects and huge amounts and huge amount of money for you to be getting to, maybe with some of the more traditional firms that people might think about for going into finance. Um, you know, the, there's huge opportunities for for your learning and uh, just getting your teeth into some really meaty projects as we as we talked about so definitely if you're a finance graduate then make sure you check out the links in the show notes to all the graduate schemes that we've talked about today which you can find at graduatejobpodcast.com slash highways england in terms of location where are people going to be based on the graduate scheme does it depend on the scheme or does everybody tend to be in one location no, it, it does depend on the scheme. Um, so all of our roles have got different requirements. So, um, for instance, our our finance and IT is based in Birmingham. Um, so that's where our kind of, I guess, um, head office is and where most people are, are based from a, an office perspective. And from a, a head office perspective are, are in Birmingham. So that's where they are. Um, but then our, our that's where they are. Um, but then our our other programmes are based in our offices um, across England, and there's there's some flexibility as to to which office they're they're based within. And as you mentioned, there's uh, what was it four thousand miles of motorway network, so there's lots of motorway and A roads around the country. So I guess lots of locations as well for people to be uh, to be working in. Yeah, so we we've got some offices that are based, as I say, across England. So we've got Leeds, Manchester. Birmingham, Bedford, Bristol, Guildford, Exeter 
I think I've remembered them all. <laughs> <laughs> and I might be biased, but uh, uh, yeah, I think Leeds probably be the best one to go for for any uh, listeners out there. Um, oh, I don't know about that, James, being a brummy. <laughs> <laughs> So in terms of let's talk uh, cold hard cash. Uh, what sort of salary could uh, could listeners expect on the on the scheme? Um, so all of our um, schemes start off at twenty five thousand, and then um, for that to rise annually throughout the scheme um, as well. Ah, excellent. So there's also, I guess, a a host of other benefits that that come along with that. Um, so you know, many of your standard ones. You know, we we've got quite good annual leave and and pension, etc. Um, and I know that for a lot of people, thinking about about pension is um is seems like it's a long way away, but um it soon starts to to hit you. So some of those benefits, you know, are are also great along with all those learning and development opp- opportunities that we've got. Definitely. You need to get your pension started as young and uh, quickly as you can. It certainly, once uh, compound interest starts getting involved, it uh, yeah, pays to get it sorted uh, nice and quickly. So, uh, yeah, definitely good advice there. So maybe let's move then to thinking about the application process, having wetted uh, the listeners with uh, with the different talk of the different opportunities there. So I know there's a broad range of listeners with uh, with the different talk of the different opportunities there. So I know there's a broad range of different schemes, but is there a common theme of what you look for from graduates? Yes. So, you know, we, we appreciate that actually graduates are likely to have very limited work experience, especially depending on whether they've done a, a placement year or not during your university. Um, so for us, it's very much about having the right aptitude um, to come along and, and to really want to perform well, having um, the high levels of passion, um, you know, to work for us. Um, it, it's very much about do you match our our values so so we recruit very much on on values and actually can we can we teach you to do something um but what you can't often teach somebody is having the right attitude towards it um so that's kind of that's that's what we look for with within our graduates those and to learn and and to want to really take ownership and put their own thoughts um as well and and show innovation in in what they're doing uh, good advice there, listeners. Make sure you know the values. Um, yeah, make sure they are front and centre in your applications. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's a really good advice there. So in terms of the application, um, how can uh, listeners apply? What does the application process look like as an initial first step? Is it CV and covering letter or is it uh, 300 word competency answers to, uh, to to apply? So neither of those. Um, so, ah. so we're slightly different so the, the the first step is obviously um all all of our vacancies are, are on our career site and then if you if you go through to apply we've opted um to no longer ask for um cvs and cover letters because as i said we appreciate that actually there's, there's limited work to be able to put onto a cv and to distinguish themselves from others through that route so there's a short application form followed by um, a situational judgment test so that's about scenarios that are real life to what you might come across in Highways England. And what that does is it asks you to um, mark what would be your most and your least likely response to that answer. So a bit like a, a multiple choice. And then that gets scored. If you pass the benchmark um, for that piece, then you go on to have a video interview, which again is is scored. Um, and then if you pass the video interview piece, that's when you'd be invited along to an assessment centre. Um, and of course, within that, that there are some depending on on the scheme, qualification require, requirements as a prerequisite. But a part and a, a short paragraph just to explain, I guess, why why do you want to work for Highways England and why do you want to be on that scheme? But no, it's it's all through a, a series of a very standardised kind of, of testing, as I say, to, to really show through whether somebody has the right attitude and the right values to uh, to take on um, working to be working for Highways England and on one of those schemes. Excellent. So let's maybe break that down uh, in turn. So before we do, though, are there any uh, grade requirements that you look for? Is it 2-1 or 2-2? It depends on the scheme. Um, so some schemes are a 2-1, some schemes are a 2-2. Okay. 
that's uh, that's cool. So listeners, make sure you uh, check out the uh, check out the website for the details for those individual schemes. And just going back then to the so the SJT. So I, I like the the leaned uh, application process. The just makes it so much easier um, when there's not. 10 competency questions of differing lengths um, just makes it so much easier to apply. Um, with the SJT, then the situation of judgment test you mentioned, any advice for listeners completing that, I guess, other than making sure that you you know what the, the values are for Highways England? I said don't overthink it is and go what your natural response would be for those areas, because that's bringing your true self. Mm hmm. And that's that way you, you will perform naturally and you should perform to your best. Um, I think if you overthink it and you try and, um, I guess, guess what we want you to put, yep. um, that's like the, either when you'll go wrong or at some point during the process, you know, it, it won't continue to be your, your true self. And that's what we really want you to, to do is to, to bring your, your true self through in the application process. You know, there's, there's no trick questions. It is, it is all about um, your thinking. Yep, no, that's good advice. And he said, once you, when you get into the mindset where you're not answering the questions honestly, you're answer, you're thinking, what do they want me to be saying here? Then yeah, you just begin to trip over your own feet, and it's difficult then to be consistent through the different stages because you, you know, you can't remember what you with what you put for the first part if it's not honest um so yeah definitely good advice there just to be authentic uh, authenticity does uh, does shine through with the next stage then the video interview is that a recorded video interview or a um sort of a face-to-face -face interview with with a member of the recruitment team it's a recorded video interview um so you you will get sent a link to it um and you'll you'll get to to practice a question just to familiarize yourself um, and then you will record um you will record your video interview and all the instructions will be there for you um and then somebody from from the recruitment team would would then look at that afterwards yeah and um you talked earlier about sort of values and you know um a big focus on values are there, are there questions um sort of strength based scenario questions or you know the more traditional competency questions that uh, that lots of companies use are you able to divulge what type of questions people might face so so it is it isn't a long video interview it it, it should only take kind of 15 20 minutes to to take that interview and it, again it, it's kind of assessing your motivations and your communication at the same time as as for wanting to particularly be on that scheme, particularly want to work for Highways England. Um, and then there are just a, a couple of questions again that are based around um, our our values for you to for you to answer. Ah, so uh, good uh, good pointers there. Uh... Um, so let's move on then to the assessment centre stage, which uh, can be a stage which can strike fear into the hearts of, uh, of many applicants. Um, what does an assessment centre look like at the moment? Are you, I guess, are they being run um, sort of remotely on online or are you hoping to do face-to-face uh, -face ones? So um, I've made the decision that our graduate assessment centres um, for this year's recruitment will be virtual. Um, given the current situation, I don't think that we can um, guarantee that we'd be able to do face to face or that it would be safe. And primarily, we want everybody to be comfortable and to be safe in the situation. So I am moving them all virtual. So they may be a little bit different to, um, to the face to face assessments that we've been running previously. But primarily, again, it will be about a number of a number of assessments taken during um, kind of a half half day just over half day period um, that will be virtual that will include things like an interview a presentation um, and and some kind of analysis exercise um, we are currently just reviewing what that looks like to make sure that actually the experience of the applicants of our, of our potential graduates that are going through that assessment process because because it's virtual um, is still as smooth and as positive as possible Yep. And, you know, it, it can be more difficult to, to say, build rapport when you're when you're doing it online. But, you know, everybody's in the same boat. Any any advice for for candidates to how they can how they can perform with the, the, the virtual aspect of the interview? 
what tips would you would you give them to to help them to stand out? I think first of all is to test the technology that you're going to be using for any virtual assessment before you have to attend that assessment. And that's one to make sure that it works and that you know how it's how it's going to work. But equally, I think that will help you be calmer when you first attend that assessment because yep. there's going to be no panicking if something, you know, you look, you'll know all the glitches hopefully already that might already be in that technology. Um, so to help you kind of be calm um, in a situation that you, you, you're not necessarily used to. We'd ask for videos to be on. So, you know, we might not be able to see the whole of a person, but it's still about having that rapport with, with facial expressions. I've interviewed people in the, in the virtual world over um, over the last six, seven months or so, and still managed to build a level of rapport through through having the video on. Yep. And if you've got poor network, just just you know having that on for a while so that you can see somebody's face and they can see you and what you look like. Remember that you know still dress professionally just because you're potentially sitting in your bedroom at home doing that assessment. Um, it's just to think about actually what does your background look like? Um, what do I look like? The, the bit that people can see. Um, yep. Even if that means put your pyjama bottoms on the bottom, you know, put a smart top on. Yep. And, and like with a face to face assessment, it, it's just really, again, about bringing yourself to it, thinking about what you can bring to that scheme. What experience have you got through through university or, or any part time work that you've done? Um, and what can you what can you bring and make sure that, you know, you're you're truly participating and, and bringing yourself through in those assessments? That's quality advice there. And just thinking then about the assessment centres generally, what are some of the, the ways that candidates tend to let themselves down at this stage? So I, I think there can be two extremes. So coming to an assessment, particularly um, where there's group exercises and, and being quite quiet. So, you know, an assessor can only assess what they're hearing and seeing from you. So, so remember to speak, but equally on the other end of the scale is not be too overbearing, is make sure that actually you're showing that um, you can think on your feet, you can think with your own initiative and work individually, but equally work as a team at the same time. So make sure that you're speaking, I guess, and listening um, in equal parts if you're in that team environment. And make it's your opportunity as well um, to ask questions. So yep. assessments of this process isn't just about you proving to the Highways England or, or any other organisation that you might be going through this process with. It's also about that organisation proving to you that um, they're the right fit for you. It has to be a two way match. So this is your opportunity if you get to an assessment centre is to ask questions and have your questions answered um, and make sure that, you know, that, that equally we're a right fit for you as much as um, the other way around. Definitely. And it is, as you said, it's a, it's a two way thing. So you need to make sure that you're going to be you're going to be on the graduate scheme for three years. You want to make sure it's going to be a happy three years and that Highways England is the right place for you so some uh, some excellent advice there and Natalie, you mentioned the group exercise is that something that you're going to try and replicate online or just leave for the back when face to face is running i'm not 100 percent sure at the moment it may be something that we decide not to replicate because i don't think the experience virtually would be the same and as i say it's it's really important that we get the most out of the candidates on that day and that the candidates feel comfortable and a group exercise might not be the best way of doing that. So it may be something slightly different this year. Yeah, no, I can I can understand that. I know from clients I've coached who've been through group exercises. I can understand that. I know from clients I've coached who've been through group exercises virtually and some people have just sort of sometimes maybe a slight delay on some of people's things. So there's people just talking over each other and that awkward thing of we sort of start, stop, start and yeah, it's it's very different to being sat around a table and being able to read people's body language and you know try and motion that you want to speak it's a lot more difficult to replicate virtually through a, through a zoom call or whatever it might be no definitely and and i'm hearing that a lot of other organizations as well are, are, are also saying that actually that they'll, they'll be sticking to virtual and um, group exercises aren't the right thing necessarily in, in that environment 
Yep, no, I can completely understand why that would be the case. So Natalie, time is unfortunately running away with us. So maybe one final question before we move to the weekly staple questions. Um, what would you say to somebody who's on the fence and has got two minds about on the fence and has got two minds about whether to apply to Highways England? What would you tell them? I'd say um, have a look, have a look at our programmes, have a look at our career site, our website, do some reading about us, follow us on social media to get a feeling about our organisation, to understand our, not only understand our schemes and what we've got to offer from that perspective, but to understand our culture and to see whether you think that you'd be the right cultural fit um, as well as whether you and whether we'd be the right fit for you, as well as whether you think you'd enjoy the, the physical work on the programmes. And just following on from that in terms of the culture, how would you describe the, it's a difficult question, but how would you describe the culture at Highways England? I think that we're a quite an open organisation in terms of, as I said earlier, you know, we want you to bring your yourself to work. We want you to put your ideas forward. You know, it doesn't matter what level you are in the and will we'll add value and will be listened to in that sense. Equally, we um, culturally, we, we believe in having a diverse um, organisation. So being your, your true self, no matter what. And to support that, you know, we have a number of employee networks to, to support that diversity across the organisation, including our, our graduate and apprentice um, network, which, which is part of you know, eight networks that we have uh, across the organisation. So, so, so culturally, I'd say that we're inclusive. I'd say that we're open. Um, and I'd say that we want people to be their true self and, and put their, their thoughts and ideas forward, whether you're a graduate and a pre or an apprentice or, or whether you're a senior, um, senior leader within in the business. Excellent. And as a graduate, you know, you want to be working in a place where where your thoughts are heard. Uh, you know, you, some workplaces aren't like that, where it's very hierarchical. And if you're if you're a graduate, then you, you know, you're you can stay quiet in the corner. And if you're if you're a graduate, then you, you know, you're you can stay quiet in the corner. Um, so it's good that you want an environment where your thoughts are heard, no matter who you are, as you mentioned. So excellent. Yeah. Graduates, make sure you check out the links at graduatejobpodcast.com slash highways England. So, Natalie, let's move on to the weekly staple questions then. So, question, the first question. What one book would you recommend that listeners should read? What book or document? So, I myself, James, am not much of a reader. Um, so, naming a book is, is a difficult one for me. But what I'd say is that if you want to find out more about highways england and understand what our at the next five years for us looks like is that there are documents on our on our website including you know reading out things like our, our annual report strategic business plans etc that they will say if, if you want to uh, really scratch under the surface definitely and Two things where if you can read them and you know really get to grips with them you'll be i'm sure you'll be impressing through the different stages whether it's video interview or the interview at the assessment center so a uh, good recommendation there so next question what uh, website or internet resource would you point listeners towards natalie so i think that there's there's many different um sources out there for you to do your research um and, and this may be a slight swerve of the question, but what I'd say is um, really invest some time to get to know um, organisations and, and what's happening in the graduate market by putting yourself out there um, through social media. So whether that's following different resources on, on various social media, but equally starting to think about raising your social media profile from a professional point of view and starting to, to make those connect future field through things like LinkedIn, um, etc. Are, are great resources for keeping up to date in what is going on in, in the world of world of business. Oh, great advice. But yeah, I think the key word there you mentioned was uh, professional. So remember that, you know, LinkedIn is, is not Facebook. So put your professional best foot forward and um, yeah, just keep it, keep it professional, professional pictures uh, and all the like. Yeah, that's good advice. And final question then today, Natalie, what one tip would you give listeners that they can implement today to help them on their job search? I think my tip would be 
is to do your research and to have a think, a good think about what you enjoy as much as what of what you're, you're good at. Um, I think that if you don't enjoy something, the likelihood is, is that you potentially will get bored and won't do well at it and do what you want to do, not what others want you to do. And that way you in, in your career and, and, and have a kind of a really good and, and happy and happy career um, with whatever you do, if you in, if you enjoy it. That is great advice and a lovely place for us to end the interview on. Natalie, thank you so much for joining me on the Graduate Job Podcast. What's the best way that people can get in touch with Highways England and the work that you do? Um, so um, I'd visit our careers um, site, which is careers.highwaysengland.co.uk. Plenty of information on there about us as an organisation and working with us. Links off to there onto our main website um, and also email addresses um, and contact forms if you do have any questions. Or follow us on social media. We're on um, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Really start to see what we're about. Super. And I will link to all of those in the show notes where there'll also be a full transcript of the episode today, uh, which you can find at graduatejobpodcast.com slash highways England. Natalie.com slash highways England. Natalie, thank you so much for your time today. Thanks for having me, James. There you go. Many thanks again to Natalie from Highways England. And admit it, you didn't know that they had those great different graduate schemes, did you? And what's not to like about them? Huge projects over the coming years, professional qualifications and a great pension to boot and a streamlined application process. Everybody's happy. Listen back to the episode and get yourself a PDF transcript in the show notes at graduatejobpodcast.com slash Highways England. Now, if you are serious about getting a graduate job with Highways England or anyone else, like as in properly serious, as in you really want the best help you can get and you really want to invest in yourself as you look for a graduate scheme, then you need my course, How to Get a Graduate Job. It's got eight modules, 23 videos, 14 hours of content to take you through everything. Three videos, 14 hours of content to take you through everything, and I mean everything that you need to know to get a graduate job. But the course doesn't end there. There is also the private Facebook group where the group members are sharing their progress and also importantly, the questions that they are facing at different stages with different companies that they're applying to. I've also been running weekly webinars for members where we go through different topics every week. And next week coming up, we are doing a mock group exercise so that everyone can get real practice ahead of the main thing. Now, it's a great group. Everybody is working together and helping each other to improve. As you can see, there are so many things with the course. There's the course itself. There's the private members group. And also there's the special offers I'm giving at the moment where you get one on one coaching with me. Check them out on the website over at howtogetagraduatejob.com and sign up and join. You'll be glad that you did. It's England. Either way, drop me a note and say hello or book yourself in for a completely free 30 minute coaching session with yours truly where we can go over your applications, do a mock interview, look at your CV, whatever you want to go over, we can cover it. Find the details for this in the show notes where you can sign up. Join me next week when I have Think Ahead back on the show discussing their award-winning graduate scheme. It's a goodie. I hope you enjoyed the show today, but more importantly, I hope you use it and apply it. Yeah.